Hi. In this tutorial video I will be redoing the audio on this 360 video clip of us running around at AudioEase. I will be using Pro Tools HD and the 360 Pan Suite version 2. There's another version of this tutorial video using Reaper. So, here's my Pro Tools. I have a, the video track lined up here, some Ambisonics Foley, three dialogue tracks that we'll be moving around, and a stereo music track. I have a monitor channel right here, in which I have inserted a 360 monitor. And as you can see, this is a 7.0.2 to stereo instance of the 360 monitor. And 7.0.2 is nine channels, which is second order Ambisonics. I like to produce my Ambisonics as wide as possible, so I can uh, upload to both Facebook and YouTube when I'm done. So the first thing I'll do is create a 7.0.2 auxiliary input and I'll call it my verb. And on it I will insert a 360 reverb. There are uh, a number of concert halls in here and churches, some recording studios, all sorts of domestic spaces. All IRs here are newly made for this verb using an ambisonics microphone, which means the acoustics will be properly ambisonics and turning your head while viewing will sound completely natural. From the work category, I'll select the empty shop, which kind of fits my scene. Click it away right now. I don't want to listen to it just yet either. Please note there is no input to this reverb channel. I'll show you. Right now I'll insert my first panner on dialog track 1. And in my panner I have a reverb send button. I'll switch it on and here I can select my reverbs in this session, which in this case is just one and it's called my verb. So there's a private line to the reverb from the panner. I'll copy over these panners to the other two dialog tracks and I'll change the puck color on Jere to green and on Max to purple. Now, now I'll insert a stereo to 7.0.2 panner on my piano track here. I'll open up one automation lane, the left right on my dialogue track, just to keep an eye on the automation points I'll be writing. And then I like to group the three tracks that will be moving around, make an edit group out of them, so that my cursor will move around in all three of them when I nudge or shuttle. The next thing I want to do is go into the preferences and switch these three things on in operation so that my cursor will nicely follow nudging and shuttling. Let's take a look at the video channel. First thing I see is that the grid is a little bit too big, so I'll tighten it a little bit. And I'll put the piano track, the stereo piano track has two pucks on the piano that I see right there. Now it's not going to move, so I'm going to switch it to invisible. And um, I actually don't want to see the grid either, and this bar can go away too. So Max will show up here, I will be there, and Jere will be up here. I will be using glide to all enabled, option, shift, forward slash, throughout moving these pucks. So I've just written my first point. I nudge, put the puck on there, and glide to all enabled. Now you see my point right there. Here I'm moving round the back, so I will be forwarding just a frame or so. It'll be nice and tight, this moving around the back. 
you see, as you see here and then I'll be nudging forward by full seconds again and gliding to all enabled. At this point Jere is appearing so I'll pick up his puck as well. Move two pucks around now all the while glide to all enabled. It is very important to keep the puck on the source at all times because the viewer can decide to look straight at one of these and the sound will then sit right in the middle. Yera disappears up there. And there Max appears. Max walks by really close to the camera and the microphone. Now the three of us recorded our dialogue in the studio afterwards because it was way too noisy. So that's what I'm panning around here. Max and me disappeared into the door behind the stairs and Jere is now following us there. And we're gone. So that's the scene. Let's back it up. Hey Jere, kun jij even helpen de speaker van het dak te halen? Yes, ik kom eraan. Okay, that moves, but it's way too dry. So let me switch on the reverb. Let's take a look at the reverb. Hey Jere, kun jij even helpen de speaker van het dak te halen? Okay, that sounds about right. Next, when I move over my puck, these three sliders appear, gain, distance and reverb width. I'll switch my channels into touch latch mode and I'll just record the distance. Hey Jere, kun jij even helpen de speaker van het dak te halen? Yes, ik kom eraan. Okay. Let's do the same on Jere. Jere is first a little bit more distant and then he ah. comes closer. Hier boven toch? Really distant. Volgens mij was die ergens daarachter. Okay, back it up a little bit. Let's do Max. Volgens mij was die ergens daarachter. Bij die groene deur ergens. Geloof ik. Ja, hier is hij. Kom je helpen? All right. And then back it up a little bit again. Because um, I'm almost gone in the video, so I should sound way more distant. Hello, baby. So that's good. Now I want the Foley to sound in this reverb as well. So I'll be making an input to this verb as well. And I'll just send this Ambisonics Foley track that I recorded in an evening where it wasn't so noisy and I'll just send it to the reverb. So now I'm reverberating an entire ambisonics recording. Toch? Yeah. These points where Jere disappears up there and I disappear behind the stairs the reverb on those points are, uh, is a little bit too wide and I can narrow down the reverb 
to tighten it around the moving sources. So let's first do that with Jere. That's about right. It makes him appear a little bit more from that attic over there. Now let's do the same on me. Volgens mij was die ergens daarachter, bij die groene deur ergens. Geloof ik. That line. Yep. Needs to be a lot narrower. Yep. Now let's listen to that in the monitor when you're actually looking around. Daarachter, bij die groene deur ergens. Geloof ik. Ja, So that distant sounding track really has a, a place in this ambisonics mix now, because of the tightened reverb. Hey Jere, kun jij even helpen de speaker van het dak te halen? Jere, kom er aan. Hier boven toch? Daarachter, bij die groene deur ergens. Geloof ik. Ja, Jo. So I think I'm done. I'm going to have to replace this 360 monitor by a 360 bounce exporter. And then set... This shuffles the channels inside this bus such that you can bounce a proper second order and first order ambisonics file. So let's bounce. There I have it. I can use this as input to the Facebook 360 encoder application. So I can marry it to Facebook video and upload it to Facebook. Now I'll do the YouTube version which will be four channels, first order ambisonics, and the four channel bus that I'll be bouncing is just a sub bus of the nine channel bus. A quad sub bus that uses the first four channels of this nine channel bus. There's another video where I'll show you what to do with these bounces, how to marry them to video for Facebook and YouTube and then upload them to internet. So thanks for watching this tutorial. Bye.